Hi there, it's Z here. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can develop a decision support system for the process of capital budgeting uh, through the tool of linear programming. Um, that's a bit of a mouthful, so I'm going to try and uh, unbundle that um, and explain what I mean. So uh, maybe it's best to start with the problem rather than the solution. So quite often in uh, large organizations that run um, portfolios of projects, you may have a um, set of uh, projects that you need to do. Um, and they all have some associated costs and some associated return. Um, but you've got a problem because you've got a limitation in the amount of money that you have. So you only have uh, 20, could be millions, thousands. Um, this is a bit of a uh, made up example, but uh, you have 82, um, let's say thousands worth of projects, but you only have 20,000 to spend. And you're now faced with a problem of uh, trying to decide which ones to do um, and maximizing your returns um, at the same time. So a naive approach would be a trial and error one where you are um, literally just um, trying to um, add and subtract um, the different projects and uh, observing what happens to the uh, benefits and whether you're still within the limit. But there is a better way of doing this because um, there is a very well-established body of work um, within the space of uh, optimization theory, in particular linear programming, where uh, if you can represent um, the constraints that you have as in a linear way, you're basically uh, showing a line and uh, this funny blue shape here, isn't it? Is the intersection of all the different constraints where you can imagine this um, is one constraint, this is another constraint, and they form a sort of a shape. And if you're trying to maximize, uh, say, x plus y, uh, well, ax times by, uh, plus by, um, this becomes something you can quite easily solve, um, even graphically, because all you're doing is you're trying to shift this. Um, along the different parallel lines to the point where either you reach a maximum or if you're trying to minimize the total, you reach a minimum within the constraint area. So in a nutshell, uh, that's what linear programming is about. Uh, there's a bit more to it, uh, but we'll get into that later. And also um, there is also a field called uh, non-linear programming. Uh, which uh, is a little bit more complex. Uh, we'll get into a bit of that later on, um, but um, maybe if I sort of uh, just pull this back a bit. So the way I'm going to do this is um, rather than try and uh, take too many different examples, I'm going to use capital budgeting um, as an example all the way through. And I will be progressively building up um, more and more complex um, assumptions where you start with a very simple model, um, you start building in different time periods where you may have different yearly constraints, you start building in further constraints where certain projects must happen together, certain projects have to be mutually exclusive, meaning if you choose one, you can't choose the other, you can have options to, um, to do a project in a uh, year one and two, or to shift it to year two and three. Uh, and you can have uh, projects that completely allow you to, to um, choose the year that you want to implement it, uh, and even get to a stage where you have randomness, um, where the amount of capital and the amount of benefits uh, change um, randomly and you need to solve it. Um, so what we'll be doing is we'll be covering all of these and the tool that we'll be using uh, will change as the problems progress in terms of complexity. Um, to start with, we'll be using Excel's uh, solver function. And this is a feature that if you have um, Excel, you will have solver. Uh, but what I'll be doing is as we go through the examples and they get a bit more complex, we'll start looking at 
other tools. Some of them are add-ins, like uh, you may not recognize what this is in the corner, but this is a nice tool called Open Solver that uh, extends the uh, features that Microsoft Excel's native solver has. Uh, gives you access to different solvers and you can do fancier things. Uh, but there'll be a point where uh, we will also step out of Excel entirely and start looking at uh, representing um, the model in Python. And uh, you might be asking why get into Python. Uh, there are a number of good reasons uh, that I'll cover in a bit, but uh, basically uh, you'll see that speed is a advantage that you get if you move out of Excel uh, among uh, one of the advantages. And um, at the end of this, uh, I've done all this using open source, freely available um, tools, but uh, we'll also look at a commercially licensed um, Excel tool called Frontline Analytics Solver, which uh, funny enough is actually the company that built the free version of Solver that comes bundled with Excel. So that's the outline of uh, what I'm going to be covering. And I'll break this up into different videos um, so that we don't overwhelm you. So uh, that's the end of video one. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.